1494, the Treaty of Tordesillas marked a defining moment in the age of exploration. Spain and Portugal, the dominant maritime powers of the time, sought to divide up the newly discovered lands and assert their control over vast territories. This treaty, mediated by the Catholic Church, drew an imaginary line dividing the uncharted world between the two European powers. However, three other powers of that time, France, England, and the Dutch Republic, were far from being deterred from the El Dorado. In this new episode on the history of Haiti, we will see how Hispaniola, and particularly the island of Tortuga, became a safe haven for buccaneers and privateers supported by European powers to attack Spanish interests. From the 1520s, the Caribbean Sea saw a rise in French pirate activity. These pirates, often referred to as buccaneers, were adventurers who engaged in acts of piracy, raiding ships, and coastal settlements for wealth and loot. The increasing numbers of French pirates in the region during this period had significant implications for the Caribbean and European powers involved in the colonization of the New World. The French filibusters were attracted to the Caribbean due to several factors. First, the region served as a crucial transit route for Spanish treasure fleets transporting vast amounts of gold, silver, and other valuable goods back to Spain from its American colonies. These valuable cargoes made Spanish ships prime targets for pirates seeking to amass wealth. Furthermore, the Caribbean offered numerous secluded bays, inlets, and islands that provided natural hiding spots for pirates to lay in wait and launch surprise attacks. The geography of the Caribbean made it an ideal base of operations for pirates, allowing them to strike quickly and disappear into the vastness of the sea. On top of that, in the early stages of European colonization, the New World presented opportunities for piracy due to the lack of established authority and control. As European powers established colonies and trade routes, their focus was primarily on resource extraction and wealth accumulation, leaving no authority to enforce the law. The French pirates, along with their counterparts from other European nations, developed a particular method of piracy known as buccaneering. The buccaneers operated primarily from bases such as Tortuga, Hispaniola, and Jamaica, where they established camps or settlements. These bases provided them with provisions, repairs, and a place to divide their spoils. The French pirates were known for their brutal tactics, which included attacking Spanish ships and coastal settlements, looting, plundering, and often engaging in acts of violence. They would capture ships, confiscate their cargoes, and sometimes take prisoners for ransom or use them as bargaining chips in negotiations with colonial authorities. European powers such as France, England, and the Dutch Republic began to recognize the strategic value of these pirates as a means of challenging Spanish rule in the Caribbean. They grant commissions, called letters of mark, to privateers, allowing them to legally attack Spanish ships and colonies. Privateering refers to the practice of privately owned ships, known as privateers, being authorized by a government to carry out acts of war against enemy vessels during a time of conflict. The concept of privateering emerged as European powers sought to establish their dominance in the New World and engage in maritime warfare against rival nations. 
From 1520 to 1560, French privateers were alone in their fight against the crown of Spain and the vast commerce of the Spanish Empire in the New World, but were later joined by the English and Dutch. One of the most famous recorded cases of privateering in the New World dates back to the 16th century when English privateers such as Sir Francis Drake and Sir John Hawkins engaged in raids on Spanish treasure fleets and colonies in the Caribbean. Sir Francis Drake, the renowned English privateer and explorer, captured the city of Santo Domingo in the present-day Dominican Republic in 1586. His occupation of the city, however, was relatively short-lived. Drake's fleet arrived in Santo Domingo on January 14, 1586. The city was ill-prepared for a significant assault, and Drake's forces quickly overwhelmed its defenses. They captured the city, looted it for valuables, and demanded a ransom from the local authorities. The exact duration of Drake's occupation of Santo Domingo is not precisely documented, but it is estimated to have lasted around a week or slightly longer. The attack highlighted the vulnerability of Spanish settlements and demonstrated the growing strength and audacity of European privateers. In 1605, Spain was infuriated by Spanish settlements on the island of Hispaniola engaging in illegal trade with the Dutch and English with whom they were at war. To stop this, they forcibly relocated the settlers closer to Santo Domingo, resulting in disastrous consequences. Those actions will be known as the Devastations of Osorio. Spanish troops raised five settlements, while some inhabitants fought, escaped to the jungle, or sought refuge with passing Dutch ships. Many colonists died from hunger and disease. Cattle were abandoned. Numerous enslaved Africans seized the opportunity to escape. The settlements of La Iguana and Bayaja on the west and north coasts respectively of modern-day Haiti were burned. The devastations of Osorio and the relocation of Spanish settlers around Santo Domingo will prove to be a major strategic error by Spain that will facilitate the occupation of the western part of Hispaniola by the French and the establishment of the future French colony Saint-Domingue. Taking advantage of Spain's weakened presence, French and English buccaneers settled on the island of Tortuga which will become the favorite hiding place of the pirates of the Caribbean. A small group of Spanish colonists initially settled on Tortuga Island. However, in 1625, French and English colonists from St. Kitts arrived on the island, intending to settle on mainland Hispaniola but redirected to Tortuga. The Spanish subsequently attacked them in 1629, led by Don Fadrique de Toledo, who fortified the island and expelled the French and English settlers. After the Spanish army left to deal with French colonists on Hispaniola, the French returned in 1630, reclaimed the fort, and expanded its defenses. From 1630 onward, Tortuga Island became divided into French and English colonies, attracting buccaneers who used it as their primary base of operations. In 1635, Spain recaptured Tortuga from the English and French, only to leave again due to its perceived lack of strategic importance. This allowed the return of French and English pirates. In 1638, the Spanish made a third attempt to take the island, expelling the French and newly settled Dutch. However, the French and Dutch colonists regained control in 1640 with the construction of Fort de Rocher, enabling them to repel a Spanish invasion the following year. By 1640, the pirates on Tortuga referred to themselves as the Brethren of the Coast. The Brethren of the Coast had a diverse membership that included individuals from various backgrounds. They consisted mainly of French and English individuals, with a smaller number of Dutch, but also a small community of Africans and indigenous Tainos who fled slavery. They shared a common desire for wealth, adventure, and defiance against European powers, particularly Spain. The Brethren were governed by codes of conduct that favored legislative decision-making, hierarchical command authority, individual rights, and equitable division of revenues. Henry Morgan, one of the most well-known Brethren, is usually credited with codifying its organization. Escaped enslaved Africans often found opportunities to join pirate crews or establish their own independent pirate bands. 
pirates, known for their opposition to established authorities and their rejection of conventional societal norms, were more likely to welcome individuals from marginalized backgrounds, including escaped slaves. Pirates valued skill, courage, and loyalty above racial or social background, making piracy a potential avenue for freedom and empowerment for those who had been enslaved. The pirates of Tortuga Island also had women in their ranks, including Jack Watt de la Haye. According to oral tradition, Jack Watt de la Haye was a red-haired mixed-race woman born in Hispaniola in 1630 to a French father and an African mother. She disguised herself as a man as was the practice of female pirates in those days. The French Angeleur Ver and the Dutch Neil Kuiper are also among the women who practiced buccaneering on Tortuga Island. It is estimated that the population of Tortuga Island ranged from a few hundred to a few thousand people. The island served primarily as a base for pirates, privateers, and smugglers, rather than a large permanent settlement. The transient nature of the pirate community and the frequent arrivals and departures of ships contributed to a fluctuating population on the island. Let's also mention that originally, the term buccaneer referred to hunters and woodcutters who smoked meat, known as boucan, on the islands of the Caribbean. These individuals would sell their preserved meat to passing ships, including pirates. Over time, the term buccaneer became associated with the pirates who operated in the region. In 1654, the Spanish captured Tortuga for the fourth and final time, marking the end of the island's significance as a pirate haven. In 1655, Tortuga Island was reoccupied by English and French interlopers led by Elias Watts, who secured a commission from Colonel William Brain, acting as the military governor of Jamaica. What served as the governor of Tortuga? In 1660, a Frenchman named Jeremy Deschamps was appointed as governor by England. But Deschamps proclaimed allegiance to the King of France, established French colors, and successfully repelled several English attempts to reclaim the island. In 1664, King Louis XIV of France issued a series of royal decrees aimed at bringing the French buccaneers and privateers under the control of the crown. The decrees aimed to regulate their activities and turn them into a more organized and disciplined force loyal to France. Regular French soldiers first set foot on Hispaniola in 1665. In that year, France dispatched a military expedition to the Caribbean, led by Admiral Jean-Baptiste Ducasse and Captain Francois Le Vasseur de Beauplan. Their mission was to establish a French presence on the island and counter Spanish influence in the region. The French expedition landed on the northern coast of Hispaniola, near present-day Cap Haitian. If at the beginning the population of Tortuga Island was in majority composed of unscrupulous individuals who engaged in freebooting to enrich themselves, however towards the end of the 17th century, the newcomers were mostly French Huguenots who fled the persecution of Protestants caused by the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. This will gradually change the lifestyle on Tortuga Island and the western part of Hispaniola. By 1670, the era of buccaneers was in decline, and many pirates turned to law cutting and wood trading as alternative sources of income. In 1680, new acts of parliament prohibited sailing under foreign flags, dealing a significant legal blow to Caribbean pirates. The Treaty of Ratisbon, signed in 1684 by European powers, including France and England, further ended piracy. Many pirates were hired into the royal services to suppress their former buccaneer allies. The capital of Saint-Domingue was moved from Tortuga to port de Pay on the Hispaniola mainland in 1676. These developments marked the decline of piracy and the shift towards more organized European colonial control in the region. The French de facto occupied the western part of Hispaniola and even appointed governors, but they were invaders in the eyes of Spain. This was only an extension of the various conflicts and wars in which the European powers clashed throughout the 17th century. The war called the Nine Years' War began in 1688. 
The main antagonists were France, led by King Louis XIV, and a coalition of other European powers, including England, Spain, the Dutch Republic, and the Holy Roman Empire. The war was born out of territorial disputes, trade disputes, and opposition to the expansionist policies of Louis XIV. Peace negotiations will lead to the Treaty of Ryswick signed on September 20, 1697, which will officially end the conflict. The provisions of this treaty were complex and included territorial adjustments. Hispaniola was one of them. 